Marcus Conti reporting from the steps of Staten Island AP1 criminal court here in Staten Island tracking the QAnon killer. Ooh, Anthony Camillo had his day in court today. I want to break some news. I had a chance to speak directly with his attorney, uh, Robert Gottlieb. I'll play that for you too. Um, so, so here we are, right? It's Staten Island, New York. Right, that's the courthouse. I was inside the courthouse. He wavered his right to appear. He was not there, but his attorney was there. And he has been indicted for murder. The judge said that from the desk. It now The case now advances to Supreme Court. Again, he didn't appear. He wavered his attorney's wavered the right to uh, appear. But here's what I, here's what I want to tell you. Right. Is this... Right, this is the story of a mob boss, right? Frankie Cali, the leader of the Gambino crime family, one of the most infamous crime families in America's history, right? And he gets gunned down in front of his house by some, some guy, right? Now, here's, here's, here's what I know, right? Like I said all, all along, that... I grew up on Staten Island. I have a vowel at the, the end of my name, too. All the Italians, Conti, uh, Camillo. <laughs> right? And I put my feelers out, and I can confirm that through at least one source that I know, that I respect, that I grew up with, that there was no mob tie. Right? The source that I, that, that I talked to said, that he may, Camillo may have known, he may have known the, the niece. That's still a little gray. Did he know Frankie Callie's niece, right? It's still a little gray. But what isn't gray is that he was a hitman for the mob, right? That, that appears from the inside that there was no sanction, there was no mob hit, there's no gangsters inside bragging, oh, we got him. Because right? that's usually what happens in a mob hit, right? And that's not what's happening today, right? Instead, what we know is that a man shoots another man 10 times in the chest for knocking off his license plate, claims that he was dating his daughter, or his niece. But there's no, there's no connection there. They may have met once or twice. But, but that doesn't seem to be the motivating factor. Only a psychopath would do that, right? Only a fucking insane person would shoot a guy for not being allowed to date his niece. Or was it a mob hit? I just told you, confirmed, more or less, that... There was no sanction on his head. There was no, there was no, no sanctioned hit. And as I said, the mob likes to brag about that sort of stuff. Right? The other thing that was confirmed through the mob people, right, my source, said that it's almost 100% that Anthony Camillo, the QAnon killer, will in fact meet his meet his fate right? will in fact get whacked because because the mob can't let that slide you can't let you can't let it slide he killed the boss right? so but then again david berkowitz right this the 44 caliber killer son of son of, son of sam he lived he's still alive he lives in He's uh, lives in he's in C Clinton Cl Correctional Facility. <laughs> what an irony that is, right? The Clinton C Correctional Facility in Clinton, New York, and he has survived uh, mob, you know, um, a contract on his head for over 35 years. So can Camillo sustain his life in jail as being a marked man? I don't know. But what, what is becoming clear is this. What is becoming clear is this, that 
This, this is about, this case is about QAnon. This case is about a kid who goes down the electronic rabbit hole, right? He's strung out on Oxycontin and pot. He's a chain smoker. He probably drinks too much. He has no friends, right? He's, he lives in his mother's basement in New Jersey, right? The last time I reported, I had, I had been in his neighborhood in Eltingville. And to clarify that part of the story, what happened was the family moved to, to New Jersey, where right now, apparently, there's two police cars parked out in front in Brick Township, New Jersey. Beautiful area, beautiful area of southern New Jersey, Jersey Shore, close to where Bruce Springsteen is, was, lives. And, um, and apparently the family moved down there to protect the kid. That's what a source told me, that, that he was troubled. And they, they did the right thing and moved, they moved the family to New Jersey. How about that? So this is, this is, not, this is not a mob hit. Right? This is the story of a kid, again, who gets sucked down the electronic rabbit hole of Q. It's the president leaking information, secret information to the, to the public to drain the swamp. They're locking up everybody. Soros and Clinton, they're in Gitmo. Right? Fucking electronic Q. Elect, we, it's new. It's a new phenomenon, right? And then he turns vigilante. He takes matters into his own hands. He puts two and two together and comes up with, I have to kill somebody. Now, I want to put on the record too that under no circumstance can you accuse me of trying to say that Q is somehow responsible for this. Because, because they're not. I'll give you an example, right? When John Lennon was asked once, right? I remember the Beatles. I remember a, a show I watched. Right? I'm watching a video of John Lennon, and, and the, the, the media guys asked him. They said, or Dylan, too, they asked. They said, do you feel responsible for, for a counterculture that is against war and, and is, is picketing and rioting and causing civil unrest, right? He says, do you feel responsible for the, for the material you put out? And John, John Lennon looked at him and says, no, I, why should I feel, I'm the artist. I publish my music, I make my music. Dylan said the same thing, I'm, I'm just a song, and, I'm a song and dance guy, I don't know what you're talking about. So under no circumstances do I, do, am I trying to weave a, a conspiracy that Q should be held responsible. Is Q responsible in some way? Is that messaging responsible for the, for the psychoticness that we saw where a man takes out a gun and shoots another man 10 times in the chest? Yes, there is a, there is a significant uh, uh, connection. The Q on his hand, the, ma the MAGA, make America great again, Patriots in charge sketched on his hand that he held up to the camera in court. There is a connection to Q. But is Q responsible? Should we condemn anybody who, who, who follows Q? No. Because like any other fantasy, like Spider-Man or Batman or, or, I don't know, you know, Daffy Duck or Bugs Bunny, right? Any kind of fantasy, right? The Wizard of Oz, right, should be allowed there to exercise their free speech, is what I'm saying. But here we have a dead man and a connection, a very, very bizarre, un incredibly bizarre connection to the Gambino crime family, right? right? So, so that's off the table in terms of should... QAnon and the YouTube perpetrators of QAnon, you know who you are, the people that run QAnon around the clock, should they be held accountable for the murder of Frankie Cali 
and the subsequent psychological breakdown, which it now looks like, of Anthony Camillo. I'll leave it up to you, but my, my thought is that no. Because if we condemn, if we condemn Camillo, right, and QAnon, we can condemn uh, Camillo, but to condemn QAnon is to condemn the, the freedom of speech that we should enjoy in this country and are slowly losing, as we can see, through censorship, right? So just, I just wanted to clarify that. So it is a fascinating story. The, um, he has been, he has been uh, indicted on something. It wasn't clear in the court. And there's no documentation uh, released yet, but the judge did say it. I did, I did hear it. I had a chance to speak to his attorney, who is continuing to plug the, the, the idea that, 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 that it hate speech through QAnon and the president had something to do with it. Marcus Conti reporting.